In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to set up Game Boy and Game Boy Color emulation within RetroArc and how to do link cable gameplay. So the first thing you're going to need is RetroArc if you don't already have it. So head on over to RetroArc.com and click on this download tab. From here, scroll about down to the bottom and there'll be a nightly build section. Now, this tutorial is only for Windows. I do not know what other systems have the same boy core that we are going to use for today's tutorial. So you can try to follow these steps for setup, but I have no idea if it'll work or if this core is even available on other platforms. I only use Windows, so that is what today's tutorial is solely based on. Anyway, click on Windows, x86-64, then scroll all the way down to the bottom and download RetroArc.7-zip. Now, once you get this downloaded and extracted and you try to run it and for whatever reason it doesn't work, go ahead and scroll up here to this redistributable 7-zip and uh, open that, install that, and you should be good to go. Anyways, once downloaded, go ahead and get RetroArc extracted. And make sure you put the RetroArc folder where you want to keep it because once you run RetroArc for the first time, it defaults all of its uh, directories into itself. So if you move the folder later, everything will be broken because it's trying to look at the old file location. So make sure you have it where you want it the first time before running it. Now, if you do happen to move it, I'm going to start up RetroArch here real quick. Ta-da, RetroArch started. We're going to close that. If you do happen to move it for whatever reason, you could just go ahead and delete the RetroArch.config file and it will start it from scratch. Anyways, let's go ahead and dive in, open up RetroArc. We are going to press F on our keyboard to full screen it. Now I have a controller plugged in, so it's automatically detecting that, which is very nice. Anyways, from here, go to the online updater, core updater, and then press right on your keyboard to scroll down to Nintendo here. And we are going to download the Nintendo Game Boy slash color same boy core. This core is awesome, it's a very accurate Game Boy core, and it has support for link cable emulation, which is fantastic. From here, we could go ahead and start loading up our games. There's really not a lot to this core as far as setup goes, and it's really awesome. So, you can just go ahead and load up any of your Game Boy or Game Boy Color games, and you're basically good to go at this point. So I have all my stuff on the desktop again for demonstration purposes. But there we go, that is basically it as far as Game Boy emulation is concerned to get set up. It's very quick, straightforward, you just download the core and load up a game, and you're good to go. Even as far as core options are concerned, there's really not a lot going on here, so... You can change color corrections, a high-pass filter, change the model of Game Boy you're trying to emulate, and then turn on the Super Game Boy border. So, really not a whole lot as far as setup or anything is concerned here. So let's go ahead and cover what you are all here for, and that is getting Link Cable Emulation up and running on the Same Boy Core for RetroArc. Now, this process is way more complicated than it really should be. I'm gonna go ahead and minimize RetroArc real quick. So, first thing you're gonna wanna do is get your Game Boy games and put them all in a single folder. So, Game Boy, Game Boy Color games, put them all in a single folder. This makes your life way easier for the link cable emulation. Now, the games also have to be unzipped. They can't be inside zip folders, otherwise the link cable emulation will not work. If you load up Pokemon Yellow, Pokemon Yellow will boot up. Then you try to turn on link cable emulation and load up Pokemon Red. Pokemon Red will load up instead, instead of it loading up both. So they have to be unzipped. The next thing we need to do is set up a directory to that folder inside of RetroArch. So in settings, scroll down here to directory. Go to the file browser and navigate to your Game Boy folder. I haven't gotten it to work without doing that myself, so I hate that that is a step, but it is what it is. Now from here, we can go ahead and load up our Game Boy games. Click on the start directory, it brings you right to it. So we're going to load up... Pokemon Blue. Now we're going to press F1 on the keyboard. We're going to press backspace to go back to the main menu here. 
and there is a subsystems icon. And now when we click on this, load two player Game Boy Link, current content Game Boy number one. So this is going to be the Game Boy pack that you're inserting into the first Game Boy. So we're gonna choose Pokemon Blue again. Now we're gonna click on subsystems again. And now we're choosing the game that will be in our second Game Boy. So we're gonna choose Pokemon Yellow. And finally, we're going to click on subsystems yet again, and we're going to press the start two player Game Boy Link once again. We can see that it has Pokemon Blue and Pokemon Yellow selected. Now both games have loaded up. Now by default, they made it so that it's a top bottom screen split. I don't really care for that. So if we go down into our options menu, we can change that to a left right configuration. And then you can also choose which Game Boy is outputting audio. And I'm going to go ahead and set my uh, emulated Game Boy for Pokemon Yellow to Game Boy Color since that's a Game Boy Color game. Now I'm going to press F1 to get out of the quick menu and there we go. Now I did go ahead and get my Pokemon Yellow and Blue saves off of my Game Boy cartridges just to show link cable functionality in action. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, put my Pokemon saves into my RetroArch saves folder. Going to boot back up into RetroArch, and let's go ahead and show the process again. So you're going to load up a Game Boy game, so Pokemon Blue. Going to press F1 on your keyboard, press Backspace, Subsystems, load up Pokemon Blue again, Subsystems again, load up Pokemon Yellow, Subsystems again, and start the link. Now, you are going to need two controllers or to assign keys to both Game Boys on your keyboard. I find it easier just to use two controllers. In today's example, I'm going to be using one controller and the keyboard. So I'm going to press F1 on my keyboard, press backspace to go back to the main menu. I'm going to scroll down to settings, and then I'm going to go to input. Now I'm going to scroll down to port one binds and I'm going to turn this off from the Xbox controller. This way player one will be assigned to the keyboard and mouse. Now I'm gonna press backspace, go down to port two binds, and I'm going to turn on the Xbox One controller. And then I'm just gonna go back into the quick menu and resume the games. Now when I press enter on the keyboard or start on my controller, both games will run. And as you can see, there are both of my Pokemon save files. And I have them both saved at the Pokemon Center just to show off the link trading in action. So let's go ahead and do this real quick. And that's it. It is that simple once you have everything properly set up. And again, this will work for any link cable enabled game. So you can use this for Pokemon. You can use it for multiplayer games, anything like that. It's awesome. Anyways, the last thing I'm going to show you today is how to set up a Game Boy and Game Boy Color playlist for your games because going through the file browser to start up your games really takes a lot of time and I don't like it. So we're going to go ahead and close out of the content. Go back to the main menu here, and then we're going to click on Show Desktop Menu. Now, for Game Boy and Game Boy Color games, you can make two separate playlists, which is what I like to do. I know we stored all of our games in the same folder, but there is a very easy way around this. So the first thing we're going to do is right-click in this white space over here, New Playlist, type in Nintendo, space, dash, space, game, space, boy. And that gives us a nice little playlist entry with a Game Boy icon. Yay. Then we're going to go Nintendo space dash space game space boy space color. And that gives us a Game Boy Color icon right here. So now we're going to go ahead and click on Game Boy. We're going to do Game Boy first. Right click in here and add folder. Again, my games are on the desktop for demonstration purposes. So we're going to choose Core, Same Boy, Database, Game Boy. 
Now we are going to type in the .gb extension. That way it doesn't grab any Game Boy Color games. And there we go. There are my Game Boy games that I put into that folder earlier and just the Game Boy games. Now we're going to do the same for Game Boy Color. We're going to right click in here, add folder, click on the Game Boy games folder, core, same boy, database, Game Boy Color, and we're going to add a C to this extension. And there's all the Game Boy Color games that are in that folder. Now you can add box arts to these if you want, depending on if your games are named correctly, you can actually automatically download them. So if you right click over here on the icon, you can click on download all thumbnails and then this playlist. And it will try to download thumbnails if it can find them for the way your game is named. And I'm going to do the same for Game Boy. Now as you can see, it did find all the box arts from my Game Boy games, but over on Game Boy Color, it didn't find all of them. It found a few, but it didn't find them all. Again, it can be very picky. Anyways, if this ends up happening, you could just go ahead and add in your own box art manually. I like to go to GameFAQs because they have a nice selection of user uploaded screenshots, but you can usually find good quality box arts. So Pokemon Yellow, for example, just going to go ahead and save this image to my desktop. Close out of that. Now I'm going to select Pokemon Yellow in my playlist. Make sure I have box art selected and then drag the box art on over. And you can do that for any of the games that don't automatically download. Now to get these playlists to show up inside of the RetroArch system browser, you just need to close out of RetroArch and restart it. And now down at the bottom, there'll be a nice entry for Game Boy and Game Boy Color. And when you go over and select them, it'll show you the box arts if you have one set. And then from here, you could just go ahead and press enter on your keyboard and select run and your games will load right up. But that does it as far as getting Game Boy set up using the Same Boy Core in RetroArch. If you have any questions, always feel free to ask me in the comment section below. I will try my best to help you out. This is a very straightforward core, so hopefully it shouldn't be too difficult. And as always, thank you so much for watching today's video. I can't express enough how much you guys help me out just by watching these uh, these tutorials, any of my reviews, anything like that on the channel. So if you haven't already, make sure you hit that sub button, that like dislike button, just depending on how much you like today's tutorial. And if you'd like to further help support the channel, you can always check out that Patreon link in the bottom right hand corner of the screen or click on that join button here on YouTube. As always, I'm just grateful for your consideration and thank you to all my champions who have already done so. But anyways, that's going to be it for me for today, so until next time, stay awesome, and we will see you all back next video.